I am. I think. I will. My hands. My spirit. My sky. My forest. This earth of mine. What must I say besides? These are the words. This is the answer. I stand here on the summit of the mountain. I lift my head and I spread my arms. This my body and spirit. This is the end of the quest. I wish to know the meaning of things. I am the meaning. I have a curious feeling when I now hold her in my arm and she lies silently against my breast and lets me kiss her and smile. I feel like one who has suddenly awakened out of a feverish delirium, or like a shipwrecked man who has for many days battled with waves that momentarily threatened to devour him, and finally has found a safe shore. I hate this, Florence, for you have been so unhappy, she declared, as I was saying goodnight to her. I want to leave immediately. Tomorrow, you will be good enough to write a couple of letters for me. And while you are doing that, I will drive to the city to pay my farewell visit. Is that satisfactory to you? Of course, you dear, sweet, beautiful woman. Early in the morning, she knocked at my door to ask how I had slept. Her tenderness is positively wonderful. I should never have believed that she could be so tender. She has now been gone for over four hours. I have long since finished the letters, and I'm now sitting in the gallery, looking down the street to see whether I cannot discover her carriage in the distance. I am a little worried about her, and yet I know there is no reason under heaven why I should doubt her fear. However, a feeling of oppression weighs me down. I cannot rid myself of it. It is probably the suffering of the past days, which still cast their shadows into my soul. She is back, radiant with happiness and contentment. Well, has everything done as you wished? I asked Natalie, kissing her hand. Yes, dear heart, she replied, and we shall leave tonight. Help me pack my trunks.